When we talk about pesticides, the first thing to think about is, is that the right name? Are they really pesticides? So we know under pesticides, under the large umbrella pesticides, you've got insecticides that kill insects, you've got herbicides that kill weeds, you've got fungicides that kill fungi, and you've got rodenticides that kill rodents. That's under the overall thing pesticides. But let's take a look at insecticides, right? We know, for example, the most widely used insecticide in the world is neonicotinoid, these nicotine-based uh, neurotoxins that they're using in corn. But they're not killing pests, just that they're killing bees. As a matter of fact, they're killing bees at such an alarming rate, it is a national emergency. 80% of many of the hives were killed just last year. So it's not a pesticide, is it, if, if it's killing non-pests? And now we know that that same neurotoxin can kill birds. And now we look at a herbicide like Monsanto's Roundup that we're spraying by the millions and millions of pounds because of genetically engineered corn and soy, and we now know it's a probable carcinogen. Well, that means it's killing humans. Oh, we're not pests. Your children aren't pests. All right? So this word pesticides hides a terrible truth, which is these aren't pesticides. These are biocides. They kill anything that's living. And just because they're convenient to the industrial agriculture system to kill a certain weed or kill a certain pest, they're not limited to that. They're nonspecific. They're broad spectrum. They will kill, in many cases, um, insects, plants that we need, I mean, Roundup, for example, you spray Roundup unless it's genetically engineered on your flowers, the flowers die. It kills anything that's green. It doesn't go, I know what a weed is. And the insecticide says, oh, I know insect. That's a bad insect. That's a good insect. No. Oh, I, we shouldn't be hurting children. They don't know that. So these, we should stop the word pesticides altogether and call these biocides. And that tells you why we shouldn't use them, because it's the culture of death. It's the culture of death. Those, those, most of those were invented for warfare use and then taken from warfare use into industrial agriculture use in the second half of the 20th century. And that is their history. And so this war on bugs, this war on supposed weeds, is actually a war on all of life, including us. Another thing we have to realize is that we are also at the end of what I call the end of the age of extermination. Industrial society and industrial agriculture are based on this idea of extermination. Well, what do I mean by that? It's anything that doesn't fit with the system. If you've got tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of acres of corn, and they think, oh, we don't want this plant, we're going to call a weed in there. Or now that you've created this huge uh, you know, smorgasbord for, for insects, oh, we've got to kill all those insects, right? The, the idea is to eliminate anything that doesn't fit with the system. If you look at a bigger picture of what industrial society did, for example, in what we now call the developing world, or what we did to the Native Americans in this country, they didn't fit our system. They didn't fit our religion. So what do we do? Genocide. This idea that you can exterminate, eliminate anything that doesn't fit in your system. And the entire biocide, so-called pesticides, we call them biocides, right? This is all based on that idea. We're going to eliminate those insects. We're going to eliminate those weeds. We're going to... But there's a problem with that idea, it completely ignores adaption. It says, oh, those weeds will never adapt to our poisons. Our poisons are too strong. Those insects will never adapt. But they do, and they have. And right now, we are at peak herbicides. Roundup was the last broad spectrum uh, herbicide that we have. Now, in order to, to kill some of these weeds, these super weeds that are now resistant, you can't kill them with Roundup, we've gone back to an element of Agent Orange. You know, we've gotten Vietnam, that's 2,4-D. Uh, dicamba, one of those dangerous, volatile herbicides in the world. We're in a chemical arms race backwards to try and kill these weeds that are becoming super weeds, and they're already getting resistant to 2,4-D, and they're already getting res resistant to dicamba. So we're at peak herbicide. That's over, right? Nature bats last, and for those baseball fans out there, it bats 1,000. It will always win. And we're seeing this in an analogous way with antibiotics. The idea before, as we all know, you went to the doctor, you had a bad bacteria, they killed every bacteria. They gave you antibiotic. Now that antibiotic, just like these herbicides and these insecticides, they don't know what is a good bacteria or bad. They just kill all your bacteria. And you try and replace it, you hopefully, later. We are learning now that doesn't work. The bugs are getting resistant with the help of industrial farming, animal farming, sadly. But still, we have all these antibiotic resistance. So what are we doing? We're going to probiotics. That's smart. We're saying we, the, the answer here isn't to kill everything. The answer is to nurture and build up a healthy bionome, a healthy human uh, system through probiotics. We're going to have to do the same thing in the new agriculture. We're going to have to say, 
Forget biocides. That was a disastrous experiment. Uh, nature bats last. We're at the end, by the way, end of fungicides too, not just herbicides, right? So we're going to have to do this anyway. It's not like we have a choice. We're not. Gonna, we're going to be overrun with these super weeds. The entire U.S. agriculture will be overrun with them in, in 10 to 20 years. We're going to have to find new ways of working with, not against, bugs working and these plants that we call weeds, and learning how they can serve how they can help us, how we can help them, how we can nurture healthier soils, healthier systems, and we can also have far more diverse agriculture that will also deal with a lot of these problems.